Well, good morning, everybody. This is a newbie tackling the Zeroli Corsair. This is episode number eight. And in the last episode, I was talking about uh, block sanding uh, these large flat areas. And a question came up about what to do about this, this curved intersection, which is unique to the Corsair and definitely presents a challenge when it comes to sanding. Uh, I know that uh, when I sheeted this area I ended up with <coughs> excuse me some some whoops and variations in this area that when you run your hands over it uh, you can feel uh, that it's not like a perfectly smooth transition from leading edge to trailing edge and <clears throat> um, trust your hands by the way your hands your fingertips can tell you more uh, about how smooth and how straight uh, the thing you're sanding is much better than your eyeball can and so I had these really bad whoops um, I did the best I could to get them sanded down uh, before glassing uh, and then, after glassing, um, is is when I went after trying to trying to get it as perfect as I could. Uh, and for that, again, I use these Dura blocks. And uh, in this case, this Dura block has no sandpaper on it. I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes, and uh, because this wing is basically ready for for color, but. When block sanding something like this, I would use a hard rubber block, something with a little bit of give to it, especially on the corners. I would not want to be using a metal block, uh, or I've used like um, um, a one by two uh, blocks of wood as sanding blocks in the past. All of those have been chip canned now because I have Dura blocks, which are uh, which are awesome. Um, and so what I do is I put 120 grit on, on a block after it's glassed, uh, after I've laid down um, primer. And when I laid the primer down on this wing, I shot like <laughs> five extra coats of primer just across this zone here. And when I sand this, I put the, the block in a lengthwise uh, distance like this and I'll sand kind of from forward, uh, forward and back like this, slowly going up and slowly covering the transition. And what happens is the edge of the, the block here, this sandpaper, kind of will cut into any high points um, that are along here. And so, like on this stroke, I might be actually pressing down along a line that is right here. And then a couple of strokes later, I'll, uh, I'll be slowly moving my way aft and then slowly moving my way forward in terms of the actual contact point that the block is making. So, you know, you go like this and I'll just slowly move my way forward with this diagonal movement like that. And then I'll usually come back at it and I'll just keep and I'll move my way aft. So I'm cutting across those, those first sand cuts. And then this way, and I'm cutting against those first sand cuts. And I'll just, I'll just keep doing this until either A, I'm tired, which, which doesn't happen really because I'm not pushing down with the block. I'm not using a lot of muscle, I'm just moving my arm. Um, and maybe the weight of my arm is, is providing uh, the downward pressure. Let the sandpaper do the work for you. Again, I use 120 for this. And I will just keep doing this until this until I've actually gotten down through the gray primer and I can see uh, the wood underneath. Uh, then I'll stop sanding. Let's say that happens up here. I'll stop sanding up here. I'll keep focusing back here uh, until I've sanded through something. And then I have to stop because otherwise I'll go through the glass. Uh, and then I shot five or six or twelve more coats of primer 
really heavy on this area. Um, and I'm just gonna start and do it again. Uh, and it, by the time I had primed the plane um, two or three times, I got to the point where I'm happy with it. Uh, my fingers can feel uh, some minor, very, very minor uh, imperfections uh, in the whoops, especially right in this area here. Uh, back here, um, uh, is, it, actually it feels perfect. So, anyway, that's how I do it. And using the, the softer rubber block keeps it from biting into the upward curvature of the wing. Uh, which is a good thing. Uh, your experience may vary. Later.